Today on Collider Movement Talk, Tom King is joining Ava DuVernay to write the new gods for DC. What's that going to be like? And Toy Story 4. Hey, it is breaking records before the movies even come out. We're going to talk about all of that today on Collider Movie Talk. I'm excited to uh, sit in the host chair today to talk these topics. Perry Nemiroff is off at the Overlook Film Festival getting her horror on, so she's having a great time here. But in the meantime, I'm sitting in here joined by these two amazing guests, the great Jay Washington right there, and of course, Silas Lezak, who I've been so much fun. Uh, I've been enjoying having Silas on because it's been so much fun to see him again more consistently. Welcome, Silas. Thank you. Welcome, Jay. Thank you, John. <laughs> it's a pleasure to see you too, John. I'm, I'm glad you could run over here from the Panera to join us. I wasn't us, Jay. on the Panera. I was at the bus stop. Was where the hell I was. <laughs> well, let's see, let's jump into the main story here, and this is kind of a big deal. Batman's Tom King is stepping in to join Ava DuVernay to co-write the script for DC's The New Gods. Tom King coming off a very successful Batman run that was, he was supposed to be on until issue 100, but mm -hmm. jumped off ish on issue 85, and they handed him a kind of a mini-series run with this Batman Catwoman thing that he had laid the groundwork for throughout his run of Batman. But now, this is according to the rap, he is going to be co-writing the script for The New Gods with Ava DuVernay. I find this incredibly interesting and a fascinating combination of minds to bring this film or to write the script for this film because Tom King is a former CIA officer turned comic book yeah. writer and Ava DuVernay has done some incredible documentaries including the 13th very socially aware mm -hmm. uh, a director and is very aware very uh, um, vocal, uh, vocal on, on social media so yes. you look at this combo do you like this combo Jay? Well first it, more so than the rap confirmed it, Ava DuVernay confirmed it in a tweet. Yes, she did she on her social media. She tweeted herself. Like we just said, she's active on she's social media. She's active on social media. I, you know what? It's interesting. I like it because now comic book fans can have a little bit of less worry. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it was just like when Jeff Johns was attached to one of the, I think it was Green Lantern. Okay. And everybody was like, well, he's too into the character. If, if, I'm, if it's not Green Lantern, excuse me, everybody, for you go crazy. But <laughs> it it's, was. So, it's the same thing where you have the comic book writer mm -hmm. who is so used to writing the pages in the comic as opposed to a screenplay. Mm -hmm. And King has actually written a story for one of the characters in A New Guy. Right, Mr. Miracle. Right. So everybody thinks that'll be the best way for them to handle this. It's just going to be interesting to see. Yeah. Because again, you and I were talking off camera Ava DuVernay didn't do well with A Wrinkle in Time. Right. And so that really put that pushback on her. Like, well, can you hand, can you hand her these blockbuster projects and she deliver on them? Yeah. And I, I want this to, su to succeed. I want it to succeed. Yeah, and you bring up a great... Oh, sorry, Jake. No, 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 go ahead. You bring up a great point on this idea of, well, was this uh, a bit too much too soon with A Wrinkle in Time? Were there other factors mm -hmm. involved? Maybe Ava wasn't... Like, maybe, you know, and it, it, regardless of gender or race, sometimes a director is handed a project and it's it's like, okay, I don't I didn't know all this other stuff was involved. Mm -hmm. I got to figure it out on the fly. So this is more of a test. She was also handed Black Panther before she gave exactly, it to Ryan. Exactly. So, so it, she, people she, like her work, obviously... Right. But now you bring in someone like Tom King. Tom King maybe solves that the problem of create the creating a shorthand for the world that she is trying to build because she's yeah. this, this is a world building movie to let her know to, to help her understand what the comic book world looks like right and because as a director and as a writer there's a different vision she has especially with all the projects we name and even many more yeah but when it comes to comic book films when you're dc you're trying to reset your own ground each of these projects have been individual where they're connected but not directly yeah and so you have to have her tell this story where it's a standalone but it does have a little bit going forward yeah, Tom. I mean, Silas, how does this strike you? Tom King stepping in here to create. You know, obviously he had, uh, Jay had mentioned him being on Mr. Miracle, and this is all with the new gods based on the Jack Kirby thing from 1971. You've got New Genesis, you've got Apocalypse, you've got these characters like Orion and Metron, the High Father, Big Barda. There's a lot mm -hmm. that gets involved in here, and of course it touches base on what the Justice League was dealing with with Steppenwolf in that movie and Apocalypse. What are your thoughts as you walk into this situation and hear this news? I, I think now is the perfect time for it. Uh, uh. We just had the bright and colorful with Shazam and people really responded to it. We had the Jack Kirby influence in Sakaar and uh, Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Um, I think we're at a point where we're ready to embrace honest Jack Kirby-ness. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that uh, Ava DuVernay and Tom King are people that genuinely have a passion uh, for these characters. Mm -hmm. There, Yeah, there's some worry of like, well, you're not technically a screenwriter, but 
figure it out. I mean, if yeah. you can go from the CIA to writing comics, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, writing a screenplay can't be that hard. Stan Lee was in the military. Right. He started making Yeah, <laughs> right. Good point. It's, oh. just, it, it, it's an interesting thing to see. Of course, mm -hmm. we want to know what this is. And there are some people who are going to go the comparison route. And what I mean by that is Marvel doing the Eternals, DC doing New Gods. Right. But let's not do that. Let's look at it as two separate entities and let them stand as such with mm -hmm. their own companies. Yeah. And it's just that you have to see, there's a lot of directors that have been given these projects where we were like, what, huh? And then you see the project mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, I'm for it. This is going to be one that we're going to have to see, especially with both of them. And again, it's hard because of Wrinkle. I get that. Mm -hmm. But you have to put the faith in, for lack of better words, the studio. Well, yeah. and, and, and I would be remiss not to add on to that. And I want to get your thoughts on this, Silas. Yeah, you talk about Wrinkle in Time. That was not really well received. Ava does, uh, but Selma is incredible. Selma's the 13th incredible. is fantastic. Is phenomenal. But Tom King's run was getting some critics. And people were wondering if this move off on 85 to give him the, the Batman Catwoman and miniseries was their way of to kind of politically moving him off the Batman uh, run which has gotten a little too trippy a little too mind bending do d does this if you're a DC fan are you concerned that these two might not create a film that you were excited about to see in the new gods universe I, I kind of hope that it goes the other way. I, I hope mm -hmm. that it gets super crazy. Like, okay. push it to oh, the limit. super trippy, um, you mean? Like, and the, okay. I, there's also the idea that it, it's sort of the perfect property. You can sort of have your cake and eat it too. Yeah. You can make a world that is in the DC universe that could cross over with Batman or Superman one day, mm -hmm. but it also doesn't need to. It, it's right. its own sci-fi world. Right, right. Well, and that's one of the questions we have. Let's go to the live chat here. Kyle Johnson asks, do you think this will fit in with the overall DCU like BBS or be more like Shazam where they make references but ultimately is its own story? Shazam. Yeah? Because that's what they're doing now. Mm -hmm. You even saw that in Aquaman where there was that one little time when Mera was like, well, you just battle Steppenwolf right. and that was it yeah. and we move forward. As of now, they're doing the little tidbits to say it's a connected universe but mm -hmm. we're telling this separate story. Yeah. So I don't think we have to worry about it as much. Just like Wonder Woman, the only thing we had connected her to the whole story was the email to Bruce. Right. That was it. So you're going to have this be its own story. And like Silas just said, it does. The New Gods does not need to connect. Right. But it can in the grand scheme of things. And the only reason you want it to connect is to bring in Acropolis, to bring in Dark Side. Mm -hmm. If you want to do those things, which they're probably going to do later, i.e. Steppenwolf and Justice League. Right. So we'll just see how it plays out. All right. And I want to ask you, Silas, uh, you look at uh, uh, J. Scott Friel, he asks, does Tom King's addition say anything about DC's confidence in Ava DuVernay because they need to bring someone in? And J. Scott Friel asks this as well, do you think Tom King has been pulled in to assist more with world building character moments or the overall story? Do they think he's had so much to con consume and create that maybe having Tom King on, on set helps to make that happen or writing the script helps to make that happen? I, I kind of wouldn't be surprised if it turns out that Ava DuVernay was the one that said, let's get Tom King in Oh here. yeah, um, right. It's he, certainly he's, the mark of a smart film director. Yes. Yeah, I, I think that she she's proven herself as somebody that is very collaborative mm -hmm. and as many people that have that sort of desire to tell this story or play with these characters, the better. Um, yeah. it, it's only gonna become something more diverse. And and I would be remiss, once again, not to say, that, yeah, the Batman thing happened, but Mr. Miracle was very well received. Very well he, received. He won a 2018 Eisner Award, so this is a man who is still very much in demand and working well as a comic And again, player. like you said, so we move on, yeah. it's making sure he knows how to go from the pages right. to the screen. Yeah. That is going to be the biggest issue. There's also kind of the hint that we might see some of his uh, Vision series with the, with the WandaVision. Right, yeah. Um, right. But that, that would be fascinating as well to see how much of that is, is going to creep in on its own. Uh, De DeVernay is coming off Netflix's Central Park 5 miniseries, When They See Us. I've seen trailers for this. It looks fantastic. I have not seen it yet. I, yeah. just, I want to see it because they say it is deep. Yeah. Yeah. It's very deep. That, I, I'm looking forward to it. So, you, you, so this will be, this is going to, this to me, this is an exciting and interesting combination. Mm -hmm. I know I asked you both your opinions, but that's my feeling on this. I think Ava definitely can direct the hell out of a movie. Let's see what she can do with this world building. And you get a little shorthand having Tom King on set. Tom be like, well, no, this is what this character would do. Okay, great. Ava's going to find the moments, the emotional connected moments between these characters 
And remember, this is a battle between good and evil with Apocalypse and New Genesis and who's good, who's mm -hmm. evil, who's not. There'll be layers. There'll be complexity here. And both of these uh, both of these people in their own medium have done that with their characters. And so I look forward to see what they can do with this. And I'm sure there'll be more coming down the line with casting and what have you yeah. and what characters will actually be in the movie. And we'll see that as it goes along. All right, next up on the show, we're going to be talking about Toy Story 4. So hit the live chat with some questions for us. But before we dive into that, check out this clip from our own Perry Namaroff, who is at the Overlook Film Festival. Hello from New Orleans, everyone. The lighting in this video is terrible because I have a fairly creepy hotel room I'm staying in. You want to see my shining shower? Look at this. This is where I'm staying while I am at the Overlook Film Festival. Tonight's movie is Dead Don't Die and also maybe Head Count. So tomorrow movie talk, I'll send another video and let you guys know what I thought about those movies. Have fun today, miss you all. And how many of you wanted that old lady from Pennywise to pop out right behind Perry Nemiroff? That would have been but fantastic. Naked, well, hey, it's a horror <laughs> it's a horror festival. It should happen, for God's sakes. Uh, before we move on to the Toy Story 4 question, let's do a plug here, or a couple of plugs. Comic Book Shopping with Seth Green is out. Go and watch that. Seth was so awesome on Collider Heroes coming in to do an interview with uh, uh, Koi and Amy. Talked about his film Changeland, but in Comic Book Shopping, Koi shows him all around the comic book and, uh, shop and sh gives him some titles that he may not have known about and he enjoys uh, taking a look at and also dropping dimes today dropped an NBA finals preview I joined Matt Nost with Josh McCuga to do some prop bets but also talk about who we think might be taking the series I got the Raptors in seven all right let's move on to Toy Story 4 before Jay goes insane uh, th let's talk about this Toy Story 4 now this is a report from Fandango <laughs> they have sold more tickets through the company in its first 24 hours than any, any other animated film. And this includes the previous record holder, more rec most recently, Pixar's Incredibles 2. Incredibles 2 currently holds the record for the biggest animated movie opening weekend record domestically with 182.7 million in its first three, day, three days, followed s far behind by Pixar's Finding Dory with $135 million. So I go to you, Silas, first on this one. Does this strike you as an indication that those of us who've been saying, we don't know if we want a Toy Story 4 are in the minority where a ma the majority is actually people who do want to go see this world again? Well, it's, it's tricky because I, I'm one of those people that has some worry that you have such a great trilogy and yeah. this, this, could, this could hurt that, um, but I'm still going to go see it. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, that adds to that total, even if it's sort of both categories. Yeah, I find that to be an interesting division now when you look at this because it's like we have this concern. But a majority of people are like, just make a good movie. I'm going to go see this thing. And obviously, the pre-sale lets you know that many people are excited to see this well, again. you got to look at the time difference between movies. We're nine years. Yeah. Nine years apart, just like with Incredibles 2. It was, yeah, what, point. 14 years. Mm -hmm. That long wait makes the anticipation happen at the box early box office numbers no matter what. Right. When you get a wait that long and a film comes out, like everybody was thinking, I'm with Toy Stories. And then the first little trailers we started getting, especially when they put Key and Peele in the front right. of those trailers. And they said, tickets are now sale. So everybody said, okay, I got to get my tickets. Yeah. It's going to go off of what the people who bought these tickets feel like after they see it. Yeah. That'll be the whole, we really didn't need another Toy Story movie moment. Because we all say those things. We mm -hmm. don't need this. We don't need that. It's until you see the actual film. This movie, like I said, <sighs> nine years since Toy Story 3. Yeah. Um, Will it break Incredibles 2 record? I'm not sure. I think it is going to smash it. I mean, well, look at John Wick. Nobody, except for John Roca here on this thing, <laughs> thought that thing was going to get close to $60 million, and it had $57 million. Yeah. So I think the, I think pub, the public is hungry to go see these films, and they will spend the money to enjoy them. Starting from Aquaman last year, there have been a, a number of surprises. First of all, they go back even more. Yeah. Venom. I'm going to bring up well, Venom. Go back even the, farther. Black Panther in February of last year. Well, like, nah, nobody saw that coming. Uh, we black people did. Let's you just saw keep $250 real. million dollar opening? Yes! You did not. You go look at every old go movie talk. Old clips I am Jay goes, Let's go no find old movie talk clips where I'm on. And I was talking about how this movie, because the, 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 the people who were coming out were underestimated. Yeah, sure. But nonetheless, yeah. Don't try me. Yeah. Uh, but still, with I this. Got receipts. Yeah. <laughs> I got them too. I download every episode I'm on. Uh, but 
you have people who want to see this and people yeah. who are taking their people who now have kids yeah, yeah. who never saw a Toy Story film like they might have seen the old ones right. but when, especially when you have younger kids who just see the old three they're not like oh it's another Toy Story movie I want to go see that so yeah. parents are shelling out for that as well well it's also this is the juggernaut right Silas this is the flagship show the flagship in essence uh, property of Pixar is Toy Story and so this well, bodes well that's kind of what I find fascinating is like driving around LA I see a a lot of billboards with the, the Ducky and Bunny Key and Pete mm-hmm. characters. And it's not the, oh, you love Woody and Buzz, they're back. It's, right. look at these fun new toys. Or sport. what is it, Sporky? Or it's a Forky. Forky. Yeah, Forky, the, yeah, you see all the of that. The toy just came out in Walmart. You can buy a Forky Pop yeah, in yeah. Walmart. I, I find Forky to, like, there's a part of the movie that does sort of make me say, oh, a toy is lost and they got to rescue him again. Mm-hmm. But Forky as a character who is sort of, not sure if he's supposed to be a toy. It's almost yeah. like there's sort of like a transgender metaphor there. And oh, that to me is fascinating. So they are not sure that they should be a toy. I'm learning to use these pronouns correctly after John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum with that act. Yeah, well, that, uh, yes. Th- that person. And I am supposed to, so I'm, I'm getting it into my vocabulary step by step. Um, this idea that it could surpass Incredibles is in play because it's uh, right now it's even outpacing early ticket sales for recent live action hits like Beauty and the Beast and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. That's those are live action hits, which is uh, all the more reason to expect a massive day. Toy Story 3 opened with 110 million, and like you, Jay said, nine years ago. So maybe this will do uh, a, even more than that. The timing is another factor. Toy Story, because Toy Story right now is opening in late June, and there's not much around it other than Child's Play, Play and Secret Life of Pets 2. So it will have some time to bring in a lot of dough and i'm glad you just brought that up yeah. secret life of pets 2 is going to do what it does regardless yeah. we know if you want to see pets you're going to go see secret life pets too sure but with child's play that's the most interesting one for me because yeah, counter programming because counter programming yeah. but the market yeah right <laughs> child's plays marketing has been just oh yeah come play with some toys right and just showing all the different toy story toys being murdered and so you have that and you have parents who are going to push back against that yeah. or jump they may not have wanted to really go see toy story but they're like oh how dare you try to market a movie that was for kids and take advantage of it like this yeah and your publicity your publicity campaign and so they'll go see toys toy story 4 but i was like those posters are amazing yeah uh, if you want to see if you think you're trying to scare the mouse with some horror thing read up on the mouse they're just fine <laughs> <laughs> They've killed their own in their time as well. Uh, look at these. Uh, let's put some comments from live chat here. Which animated sequel, this is from Steve Calderon, which animated sequel this year will likely beat Incredibles 2's openings? Toy Story 4 or Frozen 2? Oh. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, because that Frozen 2 trailer was interesting. Yes, it is. Yeah. You know, I'm going to say Toy Story. Just it, okay. It's the summer release. I think there's so many characters. I'm very excited for Frozen 2, mm-hmm. and I can't wait to see what they do with it. Right. Um, I think Toy Story 4 could come out and play it safe and make hundreds of millions of dollars. Right. I think Frozen 2 really has to hit something special. Okay. And I'm not saying it won't, but there's a challenge there. Here's the, I, I agree with that, but let's add this. How many times do you hear Let It Go uh-huh. in the Frozen tone, in the song tone? Mm-hmm. Which means people still want this. And the trailer, when we, I remember we were here on Movie Talk talking about that trailer. Yeah. And people were like, oh my God, it's finally happened. It's finally happened. Finally getting it this year. I don't, it could be a neck and neck race for this one. Right. Whereas Toy Story has already made its money for its summer run. And then here comes Frozen. And you're like, is it going to meet it, beat it, or just basically break even with yeah, it? Yeah. And it's such an unusual trailer that it dropped. There's not a lot of music. It was very kind of dark at the beginning. And actually, stuck on an island. Yeah. It was interesting take. And it doesn't come with the baggage of, uh, well, look, I, they should have just ended at three. It doesn't come with any of that baggage. So there's, I think there's more receptive audience to it. And we'll see if that will be what pushes it over the edge to even if Toy Story breaks Incredibles 2, Frozen 2 could break Toy Story's uh, for that, record. Yeah. That's certainly possible uh, with that in play. KC Supersonic says, I trust Pixar when it comes to Toy Story. I'm definitely excited to see it, but I just want it to be emotionally satisfying. It's very funny. Uh, I, 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 emotionally satisfying. What Toy Story film hasn't been? So, yeah. yeah you're going to have emotions one way or another. Right? I think there's also the fact that they have waited nine years. They mm-hmm. waited until they had something worth saying. Yeah. Um, and they, they've been very good at that. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, J. Scott Friel, each subsequent Toy Story 4 trailer has been better than the last. The marketing is working. Well, if there's anything Disney knows about, it's certainly Again, marketing. Yeah, like, you, like Silas said, Key mm -hmm. and Peele's characters are on the billboard. Yeah. And it's smart because you use Jordan Peele, who is the man right now. <laughs> and how cool is it that after having released a movie with bunnies underneath the carnival, he's now playing a carnival bunny? Bunny. Yeah. So everybody was like, what is, yeah, Jordan Peele and bunnies. Like, we know what you own, fam. We, we see you, sir. Uh, you know, I changed my mind. I think it should have been Jordan Peele who popped up behind Perry in that hotel during the video right now. That would've I think been, that Perry would have passed too. out screaming just like, <laughs> she been, oh my God! Just like she would have dropped. She wouldn't have known what to say. That's a Twilight Zone for sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's move on to uh, some quick questions from you all here in uh, tweeting at us. Um, KC Super, another one we just mentioned here, Casey. He says, most, he said, wait, oh, oh, where is it? Oh yeah, Godzilla, most likely Godzilla will win the weekend, but which of the other two big new releases uh, Ma, Ma with Octavia Spencer or Rocket Man will perform better at the box office. Rocket Man, yeah, okay. I, I think people are going to really respond to Rocket Man. They, <laughs> okay. they really responded to uh, uh, Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody. Rhapsody. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think Rocket Man's an improvement on that. Uh, that being said, if you're a horror fan, they're, they're, the double feature of Godzilla and Ma is is too weird to. Resist. Oh, absolutely. I want to go see Ma. I'm mad I didn't get those screenings. Hi, Universal. I would like to be on your list for your screenings oh to see that you God. damn right I plugged you it. Know what? <laughs> but it no, I want to know. But it, it the trailer. Shameless. Yeah, go ahead. Shameless, none at all. <laughs> but the original trailer for Ma yeah. was like, yo, this is a big thing. But you have the Elton John story, and it's been praised heavily mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ever, ever since cans everybody's like oh my god you've got to see taron edgerton right. as elton john you've got to see this yeah. and people again bohemian rhapsody no matter how people may have critically felt about it that concert feel you got knowing all the old songs and singing along with them mm -hmm. drove people out repeatedly for that yeah i will say this i i what about you, you think I, I do think it's a little crazy not to hold on to rocket man yeah. until like thanksgiving weekend it it feels like it's such a crowded month. Yeah. It, it's coming on the heels of Aladdin, which was a big musical that I think there's probably a lot of crossover crowd. And Bohemian got a lot of awards attention, which mm -hmm. Taron Edgerton is, is in some ways even more impressive just by virtue of the fact that he's, he's singing his own songs. I think it'll be interesting to see how it plays out because we, have, we had Bohemian Rhapsody. Now this year we've got Rocket Man. Uh, coming into the situation, and then we've got another one coming out, another rock and roll Isn't one the coming Beatles? out. Yeah, Isn't yesterday that, the that's yeah, coming the out. Beatles. So there's definitely a let's go back to the '60s or '70s and fall back in love with these kids. But I wonder about Elton John. I wonder about the pull here to see this movie. If this movie maybe underperforms, I I want to see what happens because I think Silas, you bring up a great point in a crowded summer with what happened to Booksmart to a lesser extent. Could this happen to Rocket Man as well, where its predictions are thirty to something, and then it's like really underperforms well, in that also way? Also, Booksmart, we'll see, as good as Booksmart Poole. is, it's still an indie film as right, a right. whole. And I, I hate. I'm not trying to dip, downplay indie films, but it doesn't have that major push yeah, behind this it. Is Elton John. This is no, no. I get, I, 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 no, I, I, I get that, thing, and I, yeah. I do get what you're saying about the summer. But that's the chance you, mm -hmm. you're willing to take if you're a production studio. Yeah, you know, people come out in summer to go see movies multiple times a day, right. multiple days a week. So you're hoping this happens with Rocket Man. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Um, one last question. We got to wrap up here. Uh, Steve Calderon. Any thoughts? On Amazing Spider-Man director Mark Webb directing Disney's live action Snow White. This broke before we got on set, just a little before we got on set. They're in talks, according to Variety, they're in talks with Mark Webb, Disney is, to direct a live action Snow White and have him direct it. Let's go to you, Silas, first. What do you think about this? I don't care so much okay. about a live action Snow White. I love Mark Webb, though. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I really, really like 500 Days of Summer. I, I think that there are things I really like in both Amazing Spider-Man movies. Yeah. Uh, if he did a third Amazing Spider-Man movie to wrap up the, that, that trilogy, I'd go see it. Um, Release the web cut? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes. Oh, please. Well, I'm out of here, y'all. Thank you. <laughs> see y'all. And what do you think? Do you like Mark Webb stepping in the situation? Possibly? Is everybody it a, keeps bringing combo. Yeah, because everybody keeps bringing up 500 Days of Summer, and I'm like, I remember Amazing Spider-Man 2 and Jamie Foxx, yeah. okay? And Amazing Spider-Man 1, which was okay, but at the same time, you still had those qualms about mm -hmm. it. And 
again, does everything need to be live action? I knew they were going to do live action Snow White no matter what. Right. But I don't know if I trust him with it. Well, and sometimes you've got to hit it out. You hit it out the gate at the beginning and it doesn't quite carry through. 2009 is 500 Days of Summer. You want to talk about nine years ago, 10 years ago. No, for his best. And that was his first kind of real big feature film. But then you've got The Amazing Spider-Man. The first one was good. Amazing Spider-Man 2 got destroyed by so many critics. And The Only Living Boy in New York also got destroyed by as some kind of white privilege movie. So this is an interesting thing he's walking into, Mark Webb, in this situation. I wonder, and the question is, is it for Disney Plus or is it for, uh, is, is it a feature film? We'll see, because I mean, I kind of wanted to move towards Disney Plus, but it's such an iconic first Disney film, first of the few Disney films, you kind of ha- see a point putting it theatrically. You, you kind of want some new twist to it. I yeah. feel like it hasn't been that long since we saw Snow White and the Huntsman and, was, and, right. and Mirror Mirror, Good both point. of which yeah. I like to varying degrees, mm-hmm. but Snow White was a big deal because it was the first animated yep. film and it was this like rotoscoped movie and making it live action almost seems like you're you're taking away something yeah. in a way that most yeah. other Disney movies, you're adding something. Right. New. We'll see what happens. I think they missed the boat not getting Peter Jackson to do it so you get his dwarfs all coming back to play the seven dwarfs like he did in his better trilogy, the Hobbit series. That's my personal opinion. All right, thanks everybody for meet watching the this episode watch meet the feebles. of Movie Talk. Really appreciate you all stopping by to watch along with us and hear our commentary on all these subjects. Shout out to Perry Nemiroff who's over there enjoying herself in the Overlook Film Festival. I will be back again tomorrow sitting in the host chair maybe there's another video coming from Perry uh, reviewing some of the films that are there that she's taking a w- uh, look at over there alright let's go around the table Jay where they can find you Twitter Instagram at Mr. Jay Washington M-R-J-A-Y you should know how to spell Washington my YouTube channel YouTube.com slash J-A-Y Washington 80 and the Mad Titan Podcast where I get you caught up on everything happening in the Marvel and DC live action universe it is Barbershop Talk for Nerds oh my god that's a whole separate uh, topic alright Silas go ahead uh, I work for Movie Bill uh, we have an app that is in the Regal Cinemas app uh, actually actually just found out before I came to the studio today that our, our latest activation is live scan uh, Warner Brothers posters and Ooh. you may see a surprise nice you can, and you can follow him at Silas Lesnick he's fantastic he's a great follow alright thanks everybody for watching you can follow me at The Rogue Says we'll talk to you tomorrow till then have a great rest of your day and we'll see you at 3pm PST tomorrow